I, I, uh, we are located on uh, Treaty 6 territory um, and respect the history, languages, cultures of the First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and all pe First People of Canada whose, who rep whose presence continue to enrich our institution. I would like to start with my manuscript entitled as Exploring Virtual Teaching Approaches Among Pediatricians During SARS-CoV-2 Pandemic, a Virtual Ethnographic Study. I am presenting this work on behalf of myself and my um, co-authors who have contributed extensively to this work. I will start with some background methods and finally some participants. Before we get into the results section, of course, um, so um, with the uh, SARS-CoV pandemic, many Canadian institutions were forced to transition their curriculum into online platform. Um, and uh, mainly because as time went by, we became pretty confident that uh, in-person learning uh, was no more possible. And so in order for, for health professional educators to successfully adapt, Many of them turn to um, technology use, of course. Um, although many institutions already had um, technology incorporated in their curriculum, um, the need to scale up the use of technology appeared to be re a reoccurring theme in the literature at that time. Um, and so in order to um, adopt uh, the, in the technology use, many educators were forced to rapidly change their curriculum. And of course, classes specifically that were historically um, taught in person or were discussion-based um, were often morphed into variation of blended learning. Although medical learners appear to be the most impacted by this transition um, of, of, of um, online, online environment, um, existing literature did show that medical educators cited increased pressure from their respective institution to transition to online environment with little, little to no training support. And the purpose was that, of course, when we explored and did our literature review, there was little empirical research conducted on understanding pediatricians' experiences with synchronous online teaching, specifically during SARS-CoV-2 pandemic to address this knowledge gap. Um, we wanted to gain an in-depth understanding of pediatricians' perspective of virtual teaching, focusing on the following question. How is synchronous virtual teaching impacting and transforming teaching experiences of pediatricians during pandemic? For our methodology, um, we used um, a, a pretty novel um, um, methodology that um, actually the, this paper is now being used as a template for how to do virtual ethnography and health profession education in a manuscript that just got accepted. So um, this it's a pretty innovative methodology that's used for the first time in this area. So what we did was we used virtual ethnography, ethnography to exp explore virtual pedagogical approaches utilized by pediatricians. And we chose to do virtual ethnography mainly because um, it enabled us to uh, provide us with rich descriptions of the phenomenon under investigation. We also had a theory, of course, uh, without the theory, qualitative research would not be possible. So we uh, used online collaborative learning um, theory. And this theory utilizes platform, uh, a virtual platform as a source of learning to foster collaboration and knowledge among learners. Foundationally, the theory has its roots in social constructivism. Within this mode of um, learning, students are encouraged to co-create knowledge while teachers serve purely as facilitators or a link to resources that students need to gain access to that knowledge. The reason why we used this um, theory was uh, mainly because of one of its sensitizing concept, and that is stressing on interactions 
Um, and, and, and that's what guided our data collection. We used um, interactive approaches to collect data by building relationship with our study participants um, and to ensure that we were actively involved in their virtual class discussions that further led to rich field data and observations. We conducted um, interviews and they were mostly done by Zoom and they were approximately one hour, 45 to an hour long. Um, we did have virtual field observations and they were predominantly done by Zoom because our, in our department, every, everybody was using uh, Zoom to teach. So um, it, th that's why <laughs> Zoom was our main uh, platform. Uh, the, for the observations ranged from, from one hour to three hours, and total of 40 hours of uh, observations were conducted. So like in every qualitative research, we send our transcripts to um, a company to get transcribed. They came back with all our trans transcripts uh, for interviews, field notes, and follow-up interviews, and then we start to analyze them as categories um, emerged, interviews were re interview guides were revisited and, and uh, reco uh, we recorded accordingly. And as broader meanings emerged, themes were formed. And lastly, we, um, uh, the relationship between these themes were compared and contrasted. Um, the study was in a single Canadian institution, and of course, that's our own University of Alberta. Um, the purpose, uh, we used a purposeful sampling uh, to recruit 15 pediatric, pediatric um, educators, and that included both clinicians and academic faculty. And of the 15, 11 of them identified themselves as females, and four of them identified themselves as males results. So four main themes were identified from this study. Um, and also, we have to keep in mind that the finding from this result may differ if I had to do this study today. Um, this was done end of 2020, 2021. Um, and so we had four main themes. And the first theme was love-hate relationship with virtual shift, self-imposed pressure to increase virtual engagement, while teaching. Um, looking back, moving forward, um, accelerated adaptation and enhanced collaboration. Um, for our first theme, we had six main uh, sub-themes and, <coughs> excuse me, uh, three of them were positive elements of technology or virtual teaching. And three of them were more of um, the negative aspects. So of course, flexibility, um, flexible opportunities for teaching, um, efficient, efficiency related to travel time, especially for physicians, and accessibility. And then lack of social dynamics and uh, interactions, uh, lack of comfort with online silences, which we're pretty expert in pros today, uh, but at that time we were not. And, and then glitches were some of the negative elements of uh, uh, virtual teaching. For our theme two, we had one sub-theme, which was dependency on various softwares and uh, teaching strategies to increase uh, engagement. This was really interesting because everybody wanted to increase engagement, and we were so much used to that student paying attention to us, and, and in the back of our mind, the, that huge worriness that they, nobody's really learning anything, so that came out from that context. Um, for our third theme, we had um, embracing the new normal and hybridized slash blended learning systems that would forever stay with us moving forward. And then for our, for our last theme, we also had two sub-themes. Um, pandemic pushed us to implement virtual teaching, as well as virtual teaching led to increased collaboration and resource exchange globally within um, medical educators. Um, here are some direct quotations for these sub-themes from our study participants. The efficiency related to travel time was a really significant one. And I think it goes back mainly because uh, of the people that we interviewed and for them that travel time was main concern. So here it is. Um, and it says that virtual teaching is more efficient because I don't have to travel. So because I work at the university, 
In the clinic, ex-clinic, sometimes I would have to travel from the ex-clinic clinic to the university or vice versa. And that would take up an extra hour in my day because of travel time. Um, the um, dependency on software and use of various teaching strategy is also captured in the following co quotation where one of our participants were saying that during COVID, um, I guess I try to make it a bit, make, make a bit more of more effort to have engaging slides or visuals that they'll pay attention to me a bit more um, and maybe keep their attention. And like I said, this, um, I, I put this direct quotation because everybody was concerned about their students. Uh, span of attention and learning retention. Um, a lot of people talked about uh, this pandemic pushed us to actually implement virtual teaching, at least in medical education or health profession education. And here it is, um, what our one of our participants has to say. Um, I think for a long time, we have been hoping to develop these, uh, to develop these virtual technologies. And COVID has forced us forced it to happen. And I think none of us are going to let, let go of these opportunities now that we have them available. The same thing for education. COVID has forced us to make some educational innovations and some of them are not great and they are just to get us by, but other ones actually make an important contribution for students and for the teachers. And finally, um, the other really strong something was that moving forward, um, and, and this happened, the interesting part about the something was that initially it was not so much famous or not very um, saturating in the initial part. But then as we grew, we went by and we did more field work for that one year, this was one of the main theme that, 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 evolves into a really, really strong perspective amongst uh, pediatricians who, who thinks that hybridized learning system would be something that will stay forever. So here it is. And it says, I think it forced us in, in a certain direction. I think there were a couple of people probably in every class, in every group of teachers who were like, yeah, I can use technology. But now it's like, no, everybody has to do it. So it's like, okay, we have to do we have to do it this way now. We are going to do it this way. And some conclusions and next steps. So results from our study provided descriptive details, which indicated that the measures, measures required during SARS-CoV-2 pandemic had greater impact on medical education than just on how we um, were teaching. Our, student has, our, our study has shown that pediatricians recognize the value of virtual teaching, and that this approach feels like a new normal among medical educators today. Um, increased collaboration, so uh, resource exchange, enhanced student engagement, blended virtual and in-person um, educational delivery are um, some of the legacies of this shift for sure uh, that was reported amongst our, our participants. Um, finally, some lessons for practice. Uh, although it's easier to participate, participate as a teacher with virtual settings. There are self-imposed pressures to be engaging, interactive, and to compensate for, that, for the loss in person experience. Adapting, um, and grow, uh, adapting a growth mindset of how this transition can improve our teaching was frequently displayed and expressed by, by our pediatricians. Um, Working together to optimize blend, blended learning models moving forward, forward will build, would, would, would help us build connections locally and among um, educators worldwide. And thank you for listening and being here this morning. I would um, end my project at this, at these three points for you.